Hi everyone, it's uh, Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. Um, you may have seen on uh, social media lately, um, we've sort of caused quite a bit of stir with our um, four-player GoldenEye uh, setup running on the N64. Now it's not just any um, four-player setup, normally you get the screen cut into four and um, you can see each player on the screen. But what we've done is we've used some equipment um, to take the signal from an original N64, um, not modified in any way, um, and take that signal, split it into four and feed it into four monitors so each player has their own screen. Now when we did that first video um, we had them all in a row and uh, quite a few people said well you know that doesn't stop screen cheating. The idea of having these individual screens is to stop people looking in the top right and seeing what they're doing and, and cheating. Um, so we've got it laid out now as we originally intended. Uh, the original video was just for, for show um, and um, yeah I just want to take you through um, exactly you know how it was done. Um, dispel a couple of myths as well. There's quite a few websites out there saying museum spends ten thousand dollars on, um, you know, splitting golden eye into four screens. Um, we didn't spend that money um, creating this setup. Um, we borrowed the equipment uh, and uh, yeah, basically created this. So we didn't spend the money doing it. But we did use some fairly expensive equipment. At least it was back in the day um, to get this done. So let's take a look at what we've got. We've got four screens here um, and on the floor down here uh, we have a, a couple of boxes, two or three boxes, um, that will take the signal and process it for us. Um, the screen here, we've got two feeds into it. So this first one has uh, the full screen, so straight from the uh, N64, which is up there. Um, and we also, on the other input, have a zoomed in uh, version of it. So you see in the top right, you can see the difference there. So there's that part of it, um, and if we go to the other screen, there's that part zoomed in. Um, and that's the whole theory for the whole thing, is just taking the feed, zooming into one area, and then panning around the screen differently on each output so that you see your quadrant. Um, and then we just put the controllers out um, with each screen so that you can control your own display. So the equipment that we used to do that, um, quite a few people out there uh, said it was a video wall, which it isn't. Um, it's it's a kind of a similar technology, but a, a video wall, you don't really have a great deal of control about exactly where um, the screen is split. It just takes it, if it's a four by four, it does it like that. Um, if it's three by three, then it does three segments across and three down and so on. But you don't have a great deal of control about where it splits it. What we've used is video scalers. Um, these were something used back in the day when CRT screens um, were commonplace um, and that gives us a lot more control over exactly where the screen cuts. So what you could do, um, I've got it switching between screens or inputs A and B there. We could have another screen if we wanted that showed the full screen all the time. Um, but this was just a convenient way of setting up the game um, and making it so that you could um, go through the menus without needing to look at all the screens um, and then you can switch to the other input to play the game. So as well as the video being split, uh, obviously we've also split the sound, so each screen um, is fed with sound, so you've got the sound coming straight at you, um, but obviously it's the same sound for all the screens. Uh, there's no way of getting your own uh, sound uh, for your particular player, you can't just hear their gun. Um, so the sound goes through a just a standard um, splitter, um, sort of distribution amplifier, uh, and feeds into each screen individually. So let's have a look at one of the bits of equipment um, that we've used. Um, this is one of those such units. Um, this is a TV1 uh, scaler. Uh, it's a dual independent scaler. So actually there's two units in this one box. Um, and what we are able to do is we're able to feed our video signal into this unit. Um, so channel one will take a video feed and channel two will take the same video feed. Um, so that's unscaled, that's the full screen. Uh, and then we can take uh, an output as well from it to each of those two other screens that we've got. Um, that will then be scaled. And we can use the control panel on the front here to say on scalar A, um, zoom into the top left and on scalar B, zoom into the top right. 
Um, yet these are very expensive. I think these were about £8,000 to buy back in the day. Um, really expensive gets bits of kit, but they do it extremely well. Um, today, I mean, I've seen, seen them on eBay. Um, there's different model numbers and they all do different things, um, different configurations, but I've seen them anything from about $800 um, up to about $5,000. So um, yeah, could be anything. And I'm sure there's easier and cheaper ways to do this. Well, not necessarily easier, but cheaper. Um, there's lots of bits of equipment out there um, knocking about the mess around with old video signals. So I've just moved the scalar setup uh, to the table here so you can actually see it. Um, this box here is a Kramer uh, video and audio distribution unit. So the signal comes from the N64 over there and into this. And then this uh, gives four signals out, two into there and two into there. And those signals are all the same. They're the full screen picture from the N64. Likewise, the audio comes into here as well. Um, and then it splits out to the four screens directly. Um, so we have this screen set up here. Um, this is on uh, player two. So I've got input B here selected. So this is on the second scaler. And we have a zoom function, which at the minute you can see there is on uh, the full screen. And I can now uh, go into that setting and zoom in to a size. So about 200% roughly um, so that we've got that top corner there. Um, so now we're zoomed in, we can pan around the picture. So if we go to the next uh, settings here, we can just go across the image and you can see it moving across there um, and get that so it's exactly right. Let's say we want to do top left. Um, and we can also then use this control here to go downwards. So we can go to the bottom of the screen like that. So we can do that, we can set up each of these scalars, like I say, there's four in there. Um, so we can have top left, top right, bottom left and bottom right. Um, and that's how we've done it. Um, there are a number of other um, features in here that allow us to make that picture that little bit better. Remember, um, the output from the N64 isn't that amazing anyway, um, even at full screen. So what we're doing is we're really cropping in um, to just that quarter, um, which is on any standard PAL image is 720 by 576 roughly. Um, so when we're looking at this through the screen there, we're looking at 352 by 288 roughly. Um, now, actually, that's the same as the old video CD formats, uh, if anybody remembers them. Um, that's what they were encoded at. So even though it's pretty low resolution, uh, these sort of screens, uh, CRTs here, sort of cover up a multitude of sins. They give it a nice kind of feel um, and it still looks pretty good. So I've um, got it playing in game now and you can see this bar here, um, which was the bar that split up the four quadrants. Um, so if I move that off screen there, we are back in top right. So that bar's just appeared off the screen there. Um, and theoretically now I can just play the game. Um, yeah. There you go. So the picture's okay, it's a bit flossy, uh, as you'd expect from uh, something at such a low resolution, um, but it's actually still really playable. Um, these screens um, do make the picture look so much better. Um, we're only using composite video to do this. Um, so again, there are losses there, but that is what the output of the N64 was. Um, and as you can tell, I am no good at GoldenEye, uh, or even walking around anything. Um, that's why I do the tech. Um, so there you go. It's a lot of equipment, yes, uh, to do something so simple, but it's pretty cool. We've had some really good fun playing it. Um, we did this for the GoldenEye um, 25th anniversary event. Um, we had it set up elsewhere in the classroom uh, and you know, it went down really, really well. Um, it's just a different way. It's not necessarily better. Um, we know that screen cheating is you know, part of the game. People enjoy it. Um, and uh, you know, so many sort of friendships have been broken over it, but hey, you know, this might be a way around it. Um, but yeah, it's just different, not necessarily better. So there you go, that's um, GoldenEye running on four different screens. So one of the questions we've had um, on social media is, um, can we do this with other games? And the answer is, yeah, pretty much. Any game that splits the screen into four, we can probably do that with. So if we take GoldenEye out and we have a go with Mario Kart, so this screen is still on the full screen configuration at the minute that lovely Nintendo logo. 
Um, now the only problem that I've come across with Mario Kart is that to get into the game, everybody needs to be able to see full screen. Now, we can take an output from the video distribution box and feed a second input into all of them. So we all go on to input B um, to go full screen to make the configurations, and then we can all go into input A to play it you know, with our own screen. So as we go in here, have a look. So if we select four player game, do you see C? So this is the problem. We have everybody now um, given the option to select a character. Um, and if our cameraman Dan um, wouldn't mind coming in and selecting the other players. So I'll select Luigi. And I'll select that one. So um, so at that point, everybody needs to see full screen. However, full screen is there. Um, now, the, on Mario Kart, it doesn't quite go to the top like it does on GoldenEye. So when I now switch to input B, there's a little bit of a gap there. But what we could do is we could scale that out. Um, I'm not going to right now, um, but we could scale that out and put that picture more in the middle. Um, so yes, bottom line is everybody can play Mario Kart with their own screen as well. Um, and the theory goes for any game that splits the screen uh, into segments. So the other question we've been asked is, um, does this work with other consoles? And the answer is yeah. I mean, anything with a composite video output could be fed into the distribution box and then into the scalers without a problem. Um, the other interesting thing that's come up is could it be used on more modern consoles? And in theory, uh, if you have a more expensive box like the one we have here, um, you could take a DVI input. So you could convert an HDMI output into DVI um, and then come out DVI uh, or composite video uh, into screens like these. However, um, obviously the aspect ratio, most things that are um, sort of DVI or HDMI are widescreen, um, whereas these screens are four by three. So you've got a bit of a, an aspect ratio problem, um, but theoretically feasible. And actually that brings me on to another interesting idea. Somebody kindly brought in um, an HDMI modded N64. So there is a, a kit you can buy um, that takes the output of your N64, uh, replaces it at chip level, um, and gives you an HDMI output. So that's quite interesting because we could modify that output um, to go into DVI, into our scalers, um, and then you've got a much crisper, nicer picture coming out, uh, and then split that signal into each of these screens into composite video. Um, that theoretically would give us you know, a nicer image on the screen. But then we're not using original equipment entirely, um, so whether we'd want to do that, I don't know. Um, the fun of this is just making sure that everything is completely original. But, you know, it's interesting. We'll give it a go um, if we get a chance to. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, please do keep an eye on our channel. Uh, we've got another event, I think, coming up um, in the not too distant future um, for GoldenEye. Uh, keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our uh, website for information about that. Um, this setup will almost certainly be featuring at that as well. And if you like what we do, um, please do consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, the museum does a huge amount of work uh, with video game preservation, um, not only doing weird and wonderful things like this, but making sure that we have a collection uh, of game consoles, of, uh, of the games themselves. The collection is quite huge. Um, there's about one and a half thousand different games consoles and computers in the collection. Uh, there's about 14,000 different bits of software and games and things in the collection as well. Um, all physical in our museum here. So please do consider coming and visiting um, or supporting us on Patreon and help us do more of what we love doing. So thanks for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, see you again next time. Thanks.